Good afternoon. This is All India Radio. I am Valsa Williams and with me is Abhishek Mukhopadhyay with the Midday News. The Headlines Prime Minister Narendra Modi addresses inaugural ceremony of 90th anniversary of Shivagiri pilgrimage and golden jubilee of Brahma Vidyalaya in Kerala. Lords Sri Narayana Guru's priceless contributions to the country's cultural heritage and value system. External Affairs Minister Dr. S. Jay Shankar reiterates India's position on Ukraine conflict, says India emphasizes on urgent cessation of fighting and return to diplomacy and dialogue. Drugs Controller General of India approves restricted emergency use of Covaxin for children between the age of 6 to 12 years. Agriculture Minister Narendra Singh Tomar inaugurates Kisan Bhagidari Prathamik Tahamari campaign today. Asia's biggest international food and hospitality fair, Ahar 2022, begins at Pragati Maidan in New Delhi. Information and Broadcasting Minister Anurag Thakur launches Azadi Ka Amrit Kahaniya, a short video collection in collaboration with Netflix India. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres to meet Russian President Vladimir Putin in Moscow today. Karnataka to take on host Kerala in first semi-final of Santosh Trophy football tournament on Thursday. Manipur to meet West Bengal in second semi-final on Friday. Badminton Asia Championships begin today at Manila in Philippines. In IPL cricket, Royal Challengers Bangalore to take on Rajasthan Royals at MCA Stadium in Pune this evening. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has said Sri Narayana Guru is the spiritual torchbearer of India who made priceless contributions to the country's cultural heritage and value system. Mr. Modi said by Guru's birth, Kerala has attained the stature of a holy land. The Prime Minister was virtually addressing a program to mark the 90th anniversary of the Shivagiri pilgrimage and golden jubilee of Brahma Vidyalaya in Kerala today. Santon ki kripa aur se Narayan Guru ke aashirwaad se mujhe pehle bhi aap sab ke bich aane ka avusar mila hai. Shivagiri aakar ke aap sab ke aashirwaad lene ka saubhagya mila hai. Aur mein jab bhi vaha aya उस आध्यात्मिक भूमि की ऊर्जा को हमेशा अनुभव किया मुझे खुशी है कि आज शिवगिरी तीर्थ उत्सव में और ब्रह्म विद्यालय के गोल्डन जुबिली के आयोजन में भी मुझे शामिल होने का आप सबने पुण्य कार्य करने का अवसर दिया है Mr. Modi said the Shivagiri pilgrimage has been a great tool to popularize the life and teachings of Sri Narayana Guru in healthcare, education and social service. Bharat ke rushiyon, Bharat ke muniyon, Bharat ke sant, Bharat ke guru ne hamesha vicharon aur vyavharon mein nirantar sanshodhan kiya aur samvardhan bhi kiya. Sri Narayana Guru ne aadhunikta ki baat ki, lekin saath hi unhone भारतीय संस्कृति और मूल्यों को समृद्ध भी करने का निरंतर काम किया उन्होंने शिक्षा और विज्ञान की बात बताई लेकिन साथ ही धर्म और आस्था की हमारी हजारों साल पुरानी परंपरा को गौरव बढ़ाने में कभी पीछे नहीं रहे यहाँ शिवगिरी तीर्थ के जरिए वैज्ञानिक चिंतन की नई धारा भी निकलती है मिस्टर मोदी से टूडे विद द इंस्पिरेशन ऑफ नारायण गुरु जी the country is serving the poor, downtrodden and backward, giving them their rights. Aaj Narayan Guru Ji ki usi prerna ko lekar, desh, gariboon, dalitoon, pichadoon ki sewa kar raha hai. Unhe, unke hak ka jo milna chahi, unko jo adhikar milna chahi, usko un adhikaro ko dena, ye humari praatfik ta raha hai. Aar isi liye, aaj desh, sab ka saaf, sab ka vikas, sab ka viswaas, aur... सबका प्रयास के मंत्र के साथ आगे बढ़ रहा है साथियों श्री नारायण गुरु जी आध्यात्मिक चेतना के तो अंश थे ही थे आध्यात्मिक प्रेरणा के प्रकाश पुंज थे लेकिन ये भी उतना ही सत्य है कि श्री नारायण गुरु जी समाज सुधाकर रग भी विचारक भी और युग दृष्टा भी थे 
calling Sri Narayan Guru a radical thinker and a practical reformer. The Prime Minister said that Guruji always followed the decorum of a discussion and always tried to understand the viewpoint of the other and tried to convey his viewpoint in a collaborative way by working with the other person. He used to create an environment in the society that the society itself used to get in the direction of self-improvement with the right rationale. The Prime Minister elaborated that when we walk on this path of reforming society, then a power of self-improvement is also awakened in society. अब जैसे हमारी सरकार ने बेटी बचाओ बेटी पढ़ाओ अभियान शुरू किया कानून तो पहले भी थे लेकिन बेटियों की संख्या में सुधार हाल ही के कुछ वर्षों में हो पाया है ऐसा इसलिए हुआ क्योंकि हमारी सरकार ने समाज को सही बात के लिए प्रेरित किया सही वातावरण तैयार किया लोगों को भी जब लगा कि सरकार सही कर रही है तो स्थितियों में तेजी से सुधार भी आने लग जाता है और सच्चे अर्थ में सबका प्रयास उसके फल नजर आते हैं समाज में सुधार का यही तरीका है और ये मार्ग हम जितना श्री नारायण गुरु को पढ़ते हैं सीखते हैं उनको समझते हैं उतना ही वो स्पष्ट होता चला जाता है द प्राइम मिनिस्टर ऑल्सो रिलीज द लोगो फॉर द नवती सेलिब्रेशन सेमिनार्स एंड कॉन्फ्रेंसेज विल बी हेल्ड इन वेरियस कंट्रीज एंड स्टेट्स ड्यूरिंग द नेक्स्ट वन ईयर टू मार्क द नवती सेलिब्रेशन Union Ministers V. Murli Dharan and Rajiv Chandrasekhar, Sri Narayan Dharma Sangham Trust President Swami Sachidanand and General Secretary Swami Rithambharanand were among those present. External Affairs Minister Dr. S. Jayashankar today said, India has a very clear position on the conflict in Ukraine which emphasizes an urgent cessation of fighting and return to diplomacy and dialogue. Speaking at the Raisina Dialogue Town Hall, Dr. Jayashankar said, Ukraine conflict is an issue of concern for everyone. Replying to a query from the audience, the minister said, Asia faces its own sets of challenges which often impact the rules-based order. He pointed out that the entire civil society in Afghanistan was thrown under the bus by the world less than a year ago. He stressed that it is all about finding the right balance of beliefs and interests. I think uh, uh, Jay Panda before referred to Atmanirbhar Bharat, a more self-reliant India. Self-reliant not just in capabilities but self-reliant in mindset and self-reliant in terms of shouldering greater responsibilities. But again, you need a narrative that would accompany that, a narrative in a sense of a new India. So therefore, to me, getting the world right, issue number one. developing the operational strategy to deal with that world issue number 2 and then developing the capabilities and the narratives to deal with that that could be my three big ones yeah that their priorities are different for different countries and there are equally pressing issues in other parts of the world is that afghanistan ukraine big power rivalry and covid have global consequences and also consequences for the everyday person Minister of State for External Affairs V. Muldi Dharan today said that India's vision will continue to be shaped by its developmental priorities at home as it moves towards assuming greater regional and global responsibilities. He said this while addressing the rise in a dialogue on India at 75, new approaches for foreign policy. Mr. Muldi Dharan said while most nations are increasingly turning inwards, India's guiding principle of Vasudev Kutumbukam has only strengthened its innate globalism. He said that today Indian diaspora's interests, welfare, and social capital are factored in while framing foreign policy. President of the European Commission Ursula von der Leyen has said that India and European Union share fundamental values and common interests as vibrant democracies. Giving the keynote address at the inaugural session of the seventh edition of Raisina Dialogue in New Delhi yesterday, Ms. Leyen said India and the EU believe in each country's right. to determine its own destiny in rule of law and fundamental rights she said they believe that it is democracy that best delivers for citizens agricultural and processed food products export development authority apda in association with the india trade promotion organization is organizing asia's biggest international food and hospitality fair ahar 2022 at pragati maidan in new delhi The fair will commence today. Commerce and Industry Ministry said more than 80 exporters from different segments of agricultural products which include geographical indication products, processed food, organic and frozen food products will participate in the fair. 
APDA has created dedicated stalls for exporters from the Northeast region and Himalayan states like Jammu and Kashmir, Ladakh, Uttarakhand and Himachal Pradesh, women entrepreneurs, farmer producers, organizations, startups and exporters of millets. Defence Minister Rajnath Singh today held a meeting with UK Minister of Defence Procurement Jeremy Quinn and discussed the opportunities available in areas of aviation, shipbuilding and other defence industrial programmes. In a tweet, Mr Singh welcomed the UK's announcement of an open general export licence to facilitate industry to industry collaboration between both the countries. He said India is looking forward to co-development co- and co-production with partner nations in the defence domain. Defence Minister Rajnath Singh today interacted with the Tiranga Mountain Rescue Team in New Delhi. On the occasion, Mr Singh said that the government and civil society are the wheels on which the country can achieve the goal of all-round sustainable development. During the interactions with the team, Mr Singh commended them for saving the lives of the armed forces personnel from threats like avalanches, besides raising awareness and imparting training to them. The minister termed the team as a source of strength to the soldiers who are deployed in difficult areas and are exposed to various threats such as avalanches. A day-long Kisan Mela has been organized at all Krishi Vigyan Kendras across the country as part of Kisan Bhagidari Pratmikta Hamari campaign. Agriculture Minister Narendra Singh Tomar and Minister of State Kailash Chaudhary virtually interacted with farmers. The farmers shared the experience of increment in income. During the Mela, schemes related information both central and state government have been disseminated among the farmers. During the fair, felicitation of progressive and innovative farmers, field exhibitions on natural farming for small and medium farmers, women farmers and FPOs and farmer scientists interaction was conducted. भारत सरकार और राज्य सरकारें इस देश को आगे बढ़ाने के लिए इस देश की खेती को आगे बढ़ाने के लिए इस देश के मानव उत्थान के लिए इस देश की शिक्षा को उन्नत शिक्षा में तब्दील करने के लिए इस देश की हेल्थ की सुविधाएं आम आदमी तक पहुंचे इस उद्देश्य की पूर्ति के लिए देश में कुपोषण की समाप्ति हो गरीबी का उन्मूलन हो और आम आदमी आत्मनिर्भर भारत और न्यू इंडिया की तैयारी में अपना योगदान करने लायक सक्षम हो सके इस दृष्टि से सारे भारत सरकार के जो मंत्रालय हैं वो अपने अपने कार्यक्रमों के अनुसार देश को आगे बढ़ाने के प्रयत्न में भागीदार बने और अगर हम साल भर के इन कार्यक्रमों के माध्यम से कुछ जागरूकता और कुछ प्रेरणा कार्यक्रमों के माध्यम से दे सकते हैं तो निश्चित रूप से यह देश के विकास और देश की यात्रा में भारत सरकार का एक महत्वपूर्ण योगदान होगा Drugs Controller General of India, DCGI, has given restricted emergency use authorization to Bharat Biotech's co-vaccine for children. The approval has been given for the children between the age of 6 to 12 years. It has also granted emergency use authorization to Corbivax for those aged between 5 to 12 years. In a tweet, Union Health Minister Dr. Mansuk Mandavia said that DCGI has also granted emergency use authorization to Zykov D for children above the age of 12 years for a two-dose regime. India's COVID vaccination coverage has exceeded 187 crore 95 lakh today. COVID vaccination for the age group of 12 to 14 years was started on the 16th of March. So far, more than 2 crore 70 lakh adolescents have been administered with the first dose of COVID vaccine. The precaution dose administration for age group 18 to 59 years also started from the 10th of April. Over 4,68,000 precaution doses have been administered in age group of 18 to 59 years so far. India's active case load currently stands at 15,636. Active cases now constitute 0.04% of the country's total positive cases. India's recovery rate stands at 98.75%. A total of 1,970 patients recovered in the last 24 hours. 2,483 new cases were reported in the same period. Over 192 crore 85 lakh vaccine doses have been provided to states and union territories so far. The vaccines have been given through the central government free of cost channel and direct state procurement category. The health ministry said over 19 crore 90 lakh balance and unutilized COVID vaccine doses are still available with the states and UTs. News Services Division of All India Radio will bring an AIR news special series on Jammu and Kashmir, a story of transformation. In the first episode of the special series, we bring to you Jammu or Kashmir, May Susanshan Ki Nib, 
To listen to this program, stay tuned to FM Gold Channel and additional frequencies from 9.15 p.m. onwards. This program will also be available on our YouTube channel, News on AIR Official, and on our website, newsonair.gov.in. You are listening to the Midday News on All India Radio, a reminder of the headlines before we move on. Prime Minister Narendra Modi addresses inaugural ceremony of the 90th anniversary of Shiva Giri pilgrimage and Golden Jubilee of Brahma Vidyalaya in Kerala, Lord's Sri Narayan Guru's priceless contributions to the country's cultural heritage and value system. External Affairs Minister Dr. S. J. Shankar reiterates India's position on the Ukraine conflict, says India emphasizes on urgent cessation of fighting and return to diplomacy and dialogue. Drugs Controller General of India approves restricted emergency use of co-vaccine for children between the age of 6 to 12 years. Agriculture Minister Narendra Singh Tomar inaugurates Kisan Bhagidari Prathmikta Hamari campaign today. Asia's biggest international food and hospi- hospitality fair, Ahar 2022, begins at Pragati Maidan in New Delhi. Information and Broadcasting Minister Anurag Thakur launches Azadi Ki Amrit Kahania, a short video collection in collaboration with Netflix India. Even Secretary General Antonio Guterres to meet Russian President Vladimir Putin in Moscow today. Karnataka to take on host Kerala in the first semi-final of the Santosh Trophy football tournament on Thursday. Manipur to meet West Bengal in the second semi-final on Friday. Badminton Asia Championship begins today at Manila in Philippines. In IPL Cricket Royal Challengers Bangalore to take on Rajasthan Royals at the MCA Stadium in Pune this evening. For quick news updates around the clock, follow us on a Twitter handle at the rate AIR News Alerts. कंपटीशन के अगर आप कर रहे हैं तैयारी तो उनके लिए ऑल इंडिया रेडियो पर हम लाए हैं अभ्यास एक ऐसा कार्यक्रम जिसमें आप पूछेंगे सवाल व्हाट्सएप नंबर 9289094044 पर या फिर ईमेल करेंगे abhyas.airnews@gmail.com पर और हमारे विशेषज्ञ देंगे इसका जवाब इस बार का विषय है सोशियोलॉजी सवाल भेजने की अंतिम तारीख है 27 अप्रैल आपका अभ्यास हमारा प्रयास वेलकम बैक टू द मिड डे न्यूज Union Minister for Health and Family Welfare Dr Mansukh Mandavia has said that the Narendra Modi government has been giving top priority for the improvement of medical infrastructure to ensure health and wellness for all citizens while addressing the intellectuals meeting in Vijayanagaram in Andhra Pradesh yesterday the minister said that healthcare could become affordable with the establishment of more and more hospitals and recruitment of more doctors and staff The union minister who reached Vijayanagaram on a two-day visit was accorded a rousing reception. Information and Broadcasting Minister Anurag Thakur today launched Azadi Ki Amrit Kahaniya a short video collection in collaboration with Netflix India. It is a series of inspiring short stories about seven Indian women who did something unthinkable, extraordinary and out of the box for India. Speaking on the occasion in New Delhi Mr Thakur said the initiative is to celebrate the achievement of women and others who inspire people across the country Azadi aur freedom is just not one event the nation and the society needs constant stream of heroes and please don't confuse it with the hero of any bollywood or hollywood movie the hero can be anyone a man or a woman their work ministry of information broadcasting and netflix have partnered to launch azadi ki amrit kahaniya and i would like to thank bela and her team and the netflix for coming on board as partner to showcasing the achievement of our unsung heroes but they have been recognized over the last few years for their good work this initiative aims to bring out beautiful stories of inspirational indians and shall motivate and empower more people to achieve their goals this is a long term partnership where different themes and diverse stories will be highlighted to inspire indians from every corner of the country The minister felicitated the inspiring Indian women who got featured in Netflix India's Azadi Ki Amrit Kahaniya series in the video an environmentalist and Padma awardee Basanti Devi has been featured she is credited for raising awareness campaigns and saving the Kosi river from drying up in Uttarakhand Another woman featured in the short videos is Anshu Jamsenpa she is a mountaineer and the first woman in the world to scale the summit of Mount Everest twice in a season and the fastest double summiter to do so within 5 days 
Featured in the short videos, Harshini Kanhekar is the first woman firefighter in India to join the list of women being recognized and honored under the Bharat Ki Lakshmi campaign by Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Minister of State for Information and Broadcasting Dr. L. Murugan, INB Secretary Apurva Chandra and others were present on the occasion. The story of Kalpita Pashti is an inspiring tale of how women with their innovative mind can achieve success in farming. Kalpita lives at a village in Wada, Taluka of Palghar district. She has taken up watermelon cultivation for the first time and has been receiving huge income. With her path-breaking experiment, she has achieved production of delicious and beautiful fruits. More from our correspondent. Palghar, a predominantly tribal district, is known for innovative experiments in the field of agriculture. Taking ahead this tradition, a woman farmer, Kalpita Pashti, has taken the production of delicious watermelon for the first time in her farm. Kalpita, for the first time, decided to cultivate watermelon in her plot of land and surprisingly she got impressive production. Kalpita and her husband Kumar Pashti have together cultivated watermelon on their 25 gunta farm. They have spent a total of 40,000 rupees for cultivation of watermelon. With soaring temperatures, fruits like watermelon, which have high water quantity in it, has a huge demand. It is to be mentioned that Vada Taluka is famous for a particular variety of rice called as Kullam. Like any other farmer, Kalpita too had been growing rice, but this time around, she decided to undertake an experiment and therefore cultivated watermelon to see whether the fruit can be grown in that type of soil. Her story can really be inspiring to other farmers for changing crop pattern. Umesh Kulkarni, Air News, Mumbai. And now, let's listen to a special program, Azadi Ka Safar, highlighting the importance of the day during the freedom struggle. Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav Azadi Ka Safar with AIR News birth of a nation. India's glorious freedom struggle is one of the greatest struggles the modern world has ever witnessed. AIR News brings you a glimpse of the struggle every day. In today's episode, we remember transnational freedom fighter Champakaraman Pillai, who died on the 26th of May 1934. Pillai was the forerunner of Ras Bihari Bose and Subhash Chandra Bose in organizing an Indian army abroad to strike against the imperialist British force at home. Pillai is credited with coining of the salutation and slogan Jai Hind. <laughs> Champakaraman Pillai was born on the 15th of September 1891 at Cochin in Kerala. Even during his student days, he was quite attracted to books and periodicals preaching nationalism and heard the speeches of all political leaders who were in the forefront of the freedom movement. The personality of Lokmanya Bal Gangadhar Tilak and his writings in his journal Kesri turned Champakraman into a patriot and revolutionary. When Tilak was arrested and sentenced to transportation, Champakraman was deeply moved and took a pledge to dedicate his life at the altar of the motherland, fighting for her freedom. Champakraman came into contact with an Englishman who was working as a spy for the Germans and with the latter's help, he left the show of India when he was just a lad of 17 years. Champakaraman first went to Colombo and from there to Switzerland. At Zurich, he completed his education and took a doctorate in engineering. When the First World War broke out, Pillay, with the help of the German embassy, formed the International Pro-India Committee in 1914, with Zurich as its headquarters and himself as the president. Pillay moved to Berlin in October 1914 and started the Indian Independence Committee. Many prominent Indian revolutionaries abroad, including Lala Hardial, Taraknath Das, Barkatullah, Dr. Chandrakant Chakravarti, Dr. Bhupendra Nath Dutt, Dr. Prabhakar, Virendra Chattopadhyay, Virendra Sarkar and Hirambalal Gupta joined him to work out the program. 
Champakraman Pillai won the confidence of the Germans and led the operations of German Navy in the Indian Ocean. He directed the German submarine Emden, striking deep into the British naval installations and destroying English war vessels. The British government announced a reward of one lakh pounds to anyone who would capture Champakraman Pillai and hand him over. But the brave son of India always eluded them. Pillai founded the Indian National Volunteer Corps during the First World War and prescribed military uniform and discipline to the volunteers. In July 1914, Pillai gave a message from Berlin to the Indian soldiers that it was time for them to rise in revolt and fight the British for the emancipation of the motherland. Later, in 1919, when Champakaraman Pillai met Netaji Subhashchandra Bose in Vienna, he explained his plan of action to Netaji Subhash. It is believed that Subhashchandra Bose chose the path shown by Champakaraman Pillai and fulfilled his dream by organizing the Indian National Army during the Second World War. Champakraman Pillai had the privilege of being the Prime Minister of the Provisional Government of India set up in Afghanistan in December 1915 with Raja Mahendra Pratap Singh of Kabul as President. However, the defeat of the Germans in the war shattered their hopes. After the First World War ended, the relationship between the Germans and self-respecting Indian revolutionaries was strained. Champak Raman raised his voice against the views of Hitler that Indians were still incapable of ruling themselves. But he fell a victim to the wrath of the Nazis as it is believed that he was slowly poisoned by them. Pillai died on May the 26th, 1934. His wife, Lakshmi Bai, underwent indescribable sufferings as the Nazis made her life miserable. But she preserved Pillai's ashes, his diary and secret documents. As per Pillai's last wish, Lakshmi Bai brought back his ashes to India where they were ceremonially immersed in Kanyakumari with full state honours. All India Radio salutes the great freedom fighter. We also remember independence activist Muhammad Yusuf Naqshbandi, who was martyred on the 26th of May, 1946. Born in 1923 in Srinagar, Jammu and Kashmir, Nakshabandi was a committed political worker. He actively joined the political movement for responsible government in Jammu and Kashmir in 1946. Nakshabandi was killed at the Khankai Maula in Srinagar on the 26th of May 1946 in the state army's firing on a procession he joined to protest against the Maharaja's tyrannical rule. We salute the great son of the soil. That brings us to the end of this episode of Azadi Ka Safar with AIR News. See you in the next episode tomorrow. The UN chief will visit Moscow today for a meeting with Russian President Vladimir Putin in a renewed bid to try to get him to agree to a pause or end to his two-month military action in Ukraine. In the Santosh Trophy Football Championship semi-final lineup is now clear. In the first semi-final, Karnataka will take on host Kerala on Thursday. In the second semi-final on Friday, Manipur will meet West Bengal. Both the matches will be played at the Payanath Stadium at 8 p.m. The final will be held at the same venue on the 2nd of next month. Badminton Asia Championships 2022, the biggest in the con- continent, begin in Manila, Philippines today. Double Olympic medalist PV Sindhu and young sensation Lakshya Sen will lead India's challenge at the 6th event. In IPL cricket, Royal Challengers Bangalore will take on Rajasthan Royals at MCA Stadium in Pune at 7.30 p.m. today. And now before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Prime Minister Narendra Modi addresses the inaugural ceremony of 90th anniversary of Shivagiri pilgrimage and Golden Jubilee of Brahma Vidyale in Kerala. External Affairs Minister Dr. S. Jay Shankar reiterates India's position on Ukraine conflicts as India emphasizes on urgent cessation of fighting and return to diplomacy and dialogue. Drugs Controller General of India approves restricted emergency use of Covaxin for children between age of 6 to 12 years. 
Asia's biggest international food and hospitality fair, AHA 2022, begins at Pragati Maidan in New Delhi. Information and Broadcasting Minister Anurag Thakur launches Azadi Ki Amrit Kahaniya, a short video collection in collaboration with Netflix India. And with that, we end the midday news.